On Plus Politics today, we talk civic education as we take a look at the advocacy and increased voter participation ahead of 2023's elections. And we'll be looking at the 2023 elections and the challenges ahead for the APC. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. People's active participation in elections is one of the key measures of electoral democracy. Now, the lack of interest or apathy in elections tend to undervalue the democratic process and gender mistrust in political institutions and enthrone unaccountable leadership. Now, this is why voter turnout is crucial uh, and an aspect of electoral studies. Nigeria has successfully undergone two decades of uninterrupted democracy. Nevertheless, recent years have shown a trend of civil, civilian engagement in the electoral process declining. There has been conspicuous decline in voter turnouts in general elections since 2003, particularly presidential and gubernatorial elections. One of, the two, one of the ways to improve the quality of elections in Nigeria is to increase voter turnout and boost the participation of Nigerian citizens in their own vibrant democracy. The more voters there are, uh, the harder it is for bad actors to taint the democratic process. Well, joining us live um, to discuss this is um, James Ugochuku. He's the co-convener co of Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room and Eugene Abels, Executive Director, uh, the Extra Step Initiative. Uh, thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thanks for joining us, Ugo. Good evening, man. Thank you for having me in Plus TV. Great. Um, let's talk about the engagement that's out there. I mean, we know that when it's close to campaign season and, of course, elections, we see um, more rhetorics, more mudslinging. We see a lot of um, propaganda, disinformation and misinformation, and pressure on all sides, both on political parties and even the voters. But then we hardly really see um, conversations that should encourage voter turnout and discourage apathy. But let me start by asking, why do you think there's so much voter apathy in Nigeria, even now in 2022? Uh, well, thank you for having me once more. Uh, when we are looking at uh, voter apathy, I think uh, we need to look back to where we are coming from, which is uh, on uh, uh, the military, uh, military, uh, the security personnel interrupting our democratic process. We can, if you can recall, say that we have a very long period of military uh, regime, and uh, what military regime gives you is uh, exclusion of the citizen from the governance process. So Nigerian citizens are still yet to come to terms that. They have uh, stakeholders in their governance process, or that they even have the power to uh, make decisions that affect them with respect to governance and all that. Now, after the transition to democracy in 1999, we have a political class that uh, still have that military mentality, and we still have the citizens that still have that military mentality. Now, let me look at the political class, for instance, now. The political class, because they have military mentality, don't see any reason for an inclusive and a participatory democracy with the people. So they tend to do things the way they like, force themselves uh, to power, and carry out the, uh, the governance process the way they deem fit. And we have the people that still believe that uh, we are still living in the democratic era, so they don't understand what the constitutional rights they have and the question they should be asking the people in governor. So when you bring all this together, you see that uh, the voter party is there. Then if you now look at the, the our electioneering process, it's of recent now that you started having something that has the semblance of an electoral management body. 
you know, electoral management body that has very few, very limit uh, or very few influence, external influence in his dealing. If you look back at 1999 election, 2003 election, 2007 election, 2007 election being the worst election that has ever been conducted in the Nigerian history, to the point that even the president elect then, uh, late uh, president uh, Umar Musayar Adwa during his sword. Uh, so in the ceremony, he admitted that the election that I brought into power was grossly flawed. And that's how we set up the uh, popular uh, waste uh, committee. So you see that uh, because the citizens believe that their vote don't count or they don't have a say in the democratic process, they decide to uh, you know, sit back, take the back seat and watch how the whole thing is going. But I want to change your uh, perspective with respect to citizens uh, participation there are parties reducing actually based on what you observe in the last uh, uh, couple of elections starting from manabra election in november 2021 last year and the uh, fct election 2023 that happened in february and of course akt and the uh, ocean election the enthusiasm is increasing and of course if you not capital if you not capital with the political consciousness that is Gaining momentum now. Citizens are now beginning to see that they have the power to make change the way it is. And that is brought about by the uh, the kind of electoral election management we are having now, namely the use of technology that is now making it very difficult for politicians to manipulate election the way they like. So citizens are now having a glimmer of hope that yes, if I vote, my, my vote will count. And if I choose a particular candidate, that candidate will be sworn in, just as we saw in uh, Oshua the uh, equity election. And uh, based on that, I think that's what, what is propelling the citizen to have active interest in what is uh, going on. And I think uh, COP 2023, and based on the search for registration for the PVC and uh, uh, you know the alignment they are doing. Uh, behind different political uh, parties and politicians and all that, I think we are going to have a very tremendous turnout when it comes to 2023 okay. general election. Uh, Eugene Abels is joining us. He's the director of Extra Step Initiative. Eugene, um, we're talking about voter enthusiasm here and, of course, pushing for more voter participation. But we can't also have this conversation uh, without bringing in civil society. Um, we also see that the civic space is saturated with all kinds of civil society organizations, but there has been that question mark around how apoliticized, uh, or apolitical, I beg your pardon, these civil society organizations are, because we have also seen and heard civil society organizations declaring support for politicians. How can the rest of society want to get involved in politics if even the guys who are supposed to speak up for the common man seems to you know, be leaning to different kinds of political parties? Yes, thanks for having me. And um, and um, um, one will say uh, everybody is a political animal, whether it be in the family, or because uh, politics basically has to do with um, the allocation of resources. Now, and this is one of the the issue you've raised is one of the reasons why those who are campaigning for a regulator of civil society and non-governmental organizations, one of the reasons that, that one of the justifications they're putting forward for that regulation. So I expect that um, uh, for me, I will advise that um, uh, well, I think there has to be some form of regulation because in the last six years for economic interest, there was, a, uh, there was an abuse which led to the proliferation of a lot of non-governmental organizations. So anything that is not regulated is likely to be abused. But the question is now, to what extent do you want to regulate before uh, the fear that everybody is concerned about begins to play, whereby let government not use that as an opportunity to begin to stifle this platform that enables the ordinary man's voice to be heard and uh, also put uh, the regulators in check. So it, I think it's, between, it's like an issue of the egg or the chicken which came first. But 
Okay. Um, like we like we say that even in the face of um, uh, in the face of um, fake a lot of fake dollar in the system, it doesn't mean that they are not competent or original currencies. So it is left for uh, we as informed individuals to naturally de uh, discern those organizations that are both that are apolitical, that are doing that which is expected of them at him, as non-governmental organization for the benefit of the society. I want to push you further. Now, uh, Ugochuku made a case that, oh, we're seeing more and more active civil uh, civic participation in the space, being that more people are getting their PVCs, more people are registering to get involved uh, in the electoral process. But I always like to, you know, I was in Anambra, I covered that election. The percentage of voter turnout was still nothing close to the number of people who registered for that election. And this can be said for several other elections across the country before um, the end of the year, or even the re most recent, which was Oshun State. There was a great voter turnout, but the percentage in itself still was nothing close to the number of registered people. Now let's talk about the PVC situation. Um, INEC did extend the time for the registration to a particular date. As soon as that, that um, date was you know, announced, we saw a lax. A lot of people just relaxed. And then when it was close to the final day, we saw a surge of people to those registration centers. And that's one step. INEC has several millions, in fact, um, voters cards that people ha are yet to pick up. So again, it makes me question how enthusiastic we are about this election. Well, I mean, campaign, campaigns are starting on the 28th. Um, are we really serious about taking over this civic space and making sure that we're part of the electioneering process? Are we doing enough? I, I, and I really don't want you to say, Abel, um, that the NOA has its job cut out for it because I do not know if it still exists. <laughs> well, uh, concerning the, the voter, the enthusiasm that you have probably felt from social media, um, normally we, we like it, we like the buzz, but we say beyond the din, um, how many people can put this to fact? I did a piece, uh, just like you observed in the last election, which you managed to buy. What was the non total number of votes that brought uh, President Buhari to power? Less than 40%. If you come to River State, 3 million voters, which they brag about, in reality, less than six, 700,000 people uh, that voted, that brought the president people into office. Now, the average excited, enthusiastic voter who is talking about PVC. You ask him, do you understand what the electoral act is saying? He probably does not. And he's not interested to do that research. Even though now we have the benefit of Google and information all around us in our hands. As you wake up beyond the Bible, the first thing you reach is your phone. Now, a lot of people are not willing to go beyond that extent. And a lot of people are also not willing to pay that price of going to pick up their cards. And don't forget, before the amendments, because they don't know what the rules are saying, some people are still doing double registrations and all of all of those of things step. And some people believe that they'll be able to cause an extension, not knowing that the Electoral Act is getting tighter and tighter. And if certain things are not done within the time frame provided for them, they can never be done again. It's just like the typical conversation here in the public space where people are saying, I let them amend the electoral act so that this can happen. And you need to, we have to go out of our way to remind them that irrespective of the amendments that are made to the act today, it is time bound. It is time bad, meaning that it cannot take effect until the next set of elections. We like the buzz, we like the enthusiasm. But um, thank God you brought this up. We use this opportunity to appeal to them for those who have not collected their cards to go and collect them. It's an opinion poll that was uh, carried out by a newspaper, uh, Premium Times, about elections and why people don't really show up to polling units, even when they have re received their voters card, even when they're eligible to vote. Um, let's start with the one from Lagos State. I, we're going to put it up on the screen now. Um, apparently, um, people gave all kinds of reasons. Some said that their votes don't count. Uh, some says, no candidate that I trust or want to vote for. 
Uh, some said that uh, the country and the governance in the country, uh, the country, uh, the form of governance is bad. Some said insecurity and violence during election. Some said they don't even have a PVC, and some others said they have no interest in politics. And some people said it's stressful. But the highest percentage of about 20-something percent uh, went to my vote does not count. How do we change this narrative? And do you think, or, or rather, what role do you think that leadership, uh, the leadership and governance trajectory in this country has played in, you know, this responses um, by some of these um, voters? Like, I, like I've told people, if your father was... Oh, this displayed, question was for Gochuku. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, Ugo, you can go ahead. Okay, it's fine. Uh, you know, like, if you reflect back to what I said earlier, the long military regime, which I call military regime hangover, is still on us. And that is where government is separated in opacity. So a lot of people still don't have that sense of belonging as citizens that they are part of this process. And that is what is making them to think that their vote don't count. And another reason is uh, the issue of uh, my practices during election. Prior to now, we have ballot boxes being snatched during election, which comes to the other respondent and say that they don't go to polling unit because of insecurity. They will look at uh, uh, politicians manipulating the election from uh, the collation process. In fact, in Situation Room 2011, we released a statement saying that the weakest link in our electoral process, process is the collation process. And then now that we have uh, INEC introducing the technology to fill in that gap, I think uh, that has been removed. And if you check the last election we had in Osho and uh, uh, states, we have more people turning out than before. Although even if we check the turnout based on the uh, previous uh, election, the turnout is not the same percentage, but in terms of number, it's more. Because when you're talking about percentage, it's a function of uh, how many number, how many percentage of which number you are calculating. So now, when it comes to 2023, yes, that uh, fear is okay. And that is where the all the national stakeholders need to come into play. You said that, uh, yes, we talked something about the uh, NOA. Of course, it's not only NOA that uh, will be a, 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 the direct beneficiary of electoral process. The media will be direct beneficiary, the civil society will be direct beneficiary, the church, the mocks, and other stakeholders are part of the people that are going to benefit. So it behooves on all of us to take this uh, message of uh, galvanizing people to come out and vote to the citizen, to the deepest uh, grassroots uh, communities for them to come out and vote, given that uh, ANEC has made it almost impossible now for election to be manipulated because we have a system where uh, the bimodal voters accreditation system, the PIVAS machine, is being used from accreditation to the collision process and the transmission of results electronically to IRF portal. So with this now, we discovered that uh, there is a uh, little room for my practices. You can't rule out my practices entirely, but there is little room for my practices. And this is where citizen vigilance comes into play. The citizen understand exactly what they need to do, what they need to watch out for, and how to respond to certain scenarios during election. I think that will help us in having the credible election that uh, we are expecting. So, okay. yes, the uh statistics came out the way it is and uh, the good thing is that we have close to four months or so to disabuse the mass of all these young people that the game have already changed and uh, of course it can be serious uh, part of this process as we are moving on finally um eugene before we wrap up because we're out of time um for the case of you know eradicating malpractice or bringing it down to a barest minimum uh you know on the path of INEC and the electoral act there has been a story making rounds about the fact that some of the people who've been nominated by Mr. President to be commissioners in INEC might be people who have been known members of the APC or people who have run for office already uh, within the APC. Now, this is also a cause for concern. How do we also make sure that this does not put a dampener on the boss that you have been talking about in closing? Yeah, um, 
with the for, first of all, I would like us thank those who have um, brought this to the public to public attention. And um, while while we're making the agitation on social media, I think it's time for people to carry a class action, deliberate ones, gather evidence against these people, and approach the courts immediately. There's there's no time to waste. In less than in twenty days time, the campaigns will begin. Yes, immediately. We just get an order of mandamus ordering a, a court to seek a relief for them to be excused from, but they should not even go for clearing. Uh, so that we don't waste time with them. It's a straightforward thing. All right. Well, Eugene Abels is uh, the executive director, Extra Step Initiative, Ugo Chuku, uh, is a co co-convener, Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you for having us. Oh, having all right. Thank you. Thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing the 2023 elections and the challenges ahead of the APC. We'll be right back. Stay with us.